Hello everyone, it's Daphne and today I'd like to talk to you about something that is very important for me because I suffer from it and because I'm thinking maybe some of you are as well so why not share my solutions and perhaps you can share yours and we can brainstorm like that. What I'm suffering from is psoriasis and if you don't know what psoriasis is you're lucky i congratulate you it means that you don't know what we people with psoriasis are going through i mean even pronouncing the word is already a big issue but feeling it experiencing it is a totally different level at first i thought my psoriasis was dandruff and now if i look back in my life, I can identify that it first started during puberty, probably when my hormones were beginning to get all stirred up and I can clearly remember I always had an itchy part here behind the nape of my neck that I would always try to scratch and to peel off the scab. Yeah, there is scabs and because it was here so far, I could not really see what it was. So I always blamed it on dandruff and I didn't really pay so much attention to it and then I remember <sighs> around my 20s I was a student and some shampoos would really trigger my allergies I call them allergies and some shampoos would not sometimes I would go through bouts of dandruff that was all over in big big flakes and later on, time passed and I got a hair treatment and then I moved to the Netherlands. At that time, I blamed it on a combination of weaning myself off the birth control pill. That's another issue I will want to discuss in the future. And the hair treatment, but actually it was the stress of moving which triggered it. And I remember the Dutch doctor calling it an allergy and prescribing me some what I now believe was some steroid cream that I rubbed on and which helped at that point and after that I was on and off with the birth control pill because I always thought that the pill is what made me accumulate weight so I tried to be off it but whenever I was off it there were the scales on my scalp generally i have it here around my hairline this is the area that i have it most of the time i also get some on this side but more rarely and i also have some on the back the one that i've always had all throughout my life the problem with this condition is that it can really affect one's social life and any sort of activity in general because imagine having a constant itch that you have to scratch and the more you think about it the more it itches and the more it itches the more you think about it and imagine it being first red and then flaky and scaly and there's flakes all over and you really want to peel the crust and you obsess over it if you can only imagine it and you haven't experienced it again you have earned my envy I would guess. So I've been battling this for all my adult life and only recently did I realize what it was called. I googled all the symptoms matched and then I tried to figure out what to do. So I went of course to Pinterest and the solutions that people presented there, some of them worked for me, others didn't. And here is a selection of what I find to be useful when it comes to psoriasis. This is externally. About internal stuff, I will come back a bit towards the end of the video. And note this was first supposed to be an Instagram post and then I started writing so much and it became a full-blown two pages. So here I am making a video about it also because I got so much good feedback from many of you who told me stories of psoriasis which were much more severe than mine. So I guess I'm lucky. But 
perhaps some of you watching now will see themselves in this and perhaps they will also feel lucky because I have to tell you there is hope and it is a condition that can be kept under control. You will never get rid of it unless you live a perfectly stress-free and clean life. Perhaps some of you can do that. I still can't. But here's how I can control it. What is this slab of something? It's colloidal silver soap. Colloidal silver is a sort of a miracle of medicine. It's supposed to be disinfectant, antibiotic, antiviral. It is tiny grains of silver particles suspended in a solution. And in this case, this comes as a bar of soap. My friend also gave me a gel that had that and I used some of it. I think I'm going to buy it for myself because it seemed to do some things to my skin. And what I do with this, I wash my face. I did not yet dare to wash my hair with it because my hair, well, that's another story. And since most of my psoriasis is around the hairline, it always touches when I wash my face. The soap is very mild, it is a coconut oil based soap that has just a few ingredients. And <laughs> the only thing I can complain about is that this baby is finished very, very quickly. I have had it for less than a month and yeah, it's a good product, but also it's cheap. So I guess that's fine. So using colloidal silver soap on the affected area. So if you have it on your body, you can just use it everywhere. Some people wash their hair with it. I told you I have not tried. Talking of hair wash, how I prepare my hair for a wash. I use this baby, which is neem oil. Neem oil is solid, I think under 20 degrees or something. This is beginning to get solid. It's not yet solid. When you first smell it, it probably smells really bad, like garlic, I would say. But knowing what good it does to me, I have grown to enjoy this herbal garlic scent. So I take a bit of my neem oil. I dip my finger in because, you know, nails and blah, blah. And I just rub it on my hairline. And this actually makes my itch stop. Nothing else does that. I really hope my hair will not look bad after this. I really wanted you to see how I do it. And I also rub here because that's where I'm flaring at this point. It's not so bad. I almost had it under control and then I traveled to Holland and the climate there is really good or bad, however you want to call it, it triggers my flares. So neem oil is a treatment that I apply to my hair before washing it. And I generally like to leave it in the hair for a night in order not to get my towel dirty because this is like green, dark green. In order not to get my towel dirty, I put a towel, my, um, Pillow dirty, I put a towel over it and that's how I sleep. Another oil that I alternate is Tamanu oil, which is supposed to be one of the best oils you can get out there for many skin conditions. Some people say it treats acne, others say that it treats scars. It's also very, very good. Um, they also say it's a sort of a... Um, sun protection oil. I tried using it instead of sun protection and that didn't go very well. Probably I should have reapplied. Anyhow, another oil that I use, it's also a dark green, something also with a pungent smell, but Tamanu smells better than neem. And what I do with it, I apply it in the same way. Either I combine them or I alternate them or... So this goes mostly on the scalp, on the skin. I don't apply it to the hair. I have here in this sample size of um, another product, a mixture of tamanu, neem, argan, squalene, and a bit of almond. And I think lavender essential oil. 
and I just go between all these basically on a daily basis and I use it as a pre-treatment for my hair and when I want to wash my hair I use a shampoo that contains no sulfates no parabens and that is very important to mention as soon as I switched to sulfate free paraben free shampoo lots of my issues with my scalp went away so if you are a beginner to this I would advise you to stop using sulfate and paraben shampoos maybe that enough has that on its own has enough benefits for you and you don't need anything else I don't know and then I generally double cleanse because of the oil so there's a lot of oil on my scalp anyhow and after that I apply my sulfate free paraben free conditioner there are many from many brands um, I have actually a review coming up of a natural brand from Denmark called Urtekram and they have very cool stuff which I found to be delightful for my hair. After I apply the conditioner I leave it on for like 5 minutes while I wash the rest of my body then I rinse the conditioner and here comes my baby, my treasure, my joy. I think this is another one of the essentials. If you want to start with something start with this. This is a apple cider vinegar extract for rinsing the hair and the idea is too brilliant for words you don't really have to buy a product like this and spend five euro like I did just take a spray bottle and mix in it water apple cider vinegar rosemary leaves lavender flowers rosemary oil lavender oil and that's it and actually I love the smell of this but generally I kind of like the smell of vinegar. This really smells like rosemary and lavender. So I apply it only to the areas in question. I just spray it on there and immediately I rinse. This keeps the itch at bay. This is a godsend. And after I style my hair, I blow dry it. I do all the crazy things that I do to it because I don't like my hair to be naturally curly. You've seen me in a few videos then that night after washing my hair I apply argan oil again generally all over the scalp this is my current routine and this is what has been working for me if I have a flare I just apply more vinegar I know that some people use a sodium bicarbonate baking soda on the scalp I find that way too aggressive and I find that it dries my hair. Um, I also sometimes use a amla oil, it's an infusion, amla in oil, which also has great effects and it also makes the hair very shiny. That's not completely natural, these things are bio-organic, that's why these are better in a way. And because it's in the area around my face I try very hard to use cleaner products on my face and to touch them a bit again on these parts where I get the flares and my friend Adina brought me from the USA something from a brand called Living Libations it's called the Rose Glow Serum it looks like this I just love the dropper it's the type of product I fall for. The smell is amazing. It's rose and rose hip and lavender. I just love putting this on. Generally, I use it in the evening, even though it's a day serum. It contains jojoba, sea buckthorn, rose otto, geranium, neroli, lavender, stone root, and palma rosa. This amazing product makes my skin glow and it gives me the aromatherapy feeling and uh, that's also very important when you deal with psoriasis because it's stress related and you really need to find those moments for yourself where you apply a nice cream a nice serum and then enjoy being in your own skin because normally your own skin is very itchy and 
I also have a cream from the same brand. It's called the Rose Glow Cream. Organic rose water, rose hips, aloe vera, seaweed, jojoba herbal infusions of elderflowers, horsetail, comfrey root, rosebud, nettles, marshmallow, sea buckthorn, toning essential oils of lavender, neroli, rose, oro, palmarosa, and geranium. This is what I apply over the serum and I just live for the sensation that it gives me. It's so uplifting. Of course, I sometimes wear it during the day, but I don't wear oil under my makeup. In order to lift my spirit, just like I said earlier, and to give my body a good scrub, I use from Nubian Heritage Indian Hemp and Haitian Vetiver with neem oil, the same neem oil I was telling you earlier, but in this combination it smells divine and I just use it all over my body again for a bit of a spa, fe spa feeling this has sugar shea butter safflower oil argan oil cocoa seed butter mango seed butter jojoba vegetable glycerin olive oil vitamin E capri honeysuckle extract Japanese honeysuckle flower extract extract of frankincense and myrrh which brings me to, I guess, another essential part of my routine. Pampering, feeling good, having a nice time, trying to reduce stress. Because did I mention stress is the main culprit for psoriasis? And let's face it. In the current world, our body lives as if it's under current aggression. I, for one, perhaps you will think that I am this person with a sheltered life. I am like that when I'm talking to you. And it's one of the reasons why I no longer upload so often here on YouTube. Because I often feel so stressed that I don't have the patience and the energy to sit in front of the camera and tell you something that is beautiful and entertaining and educational. And that's why I consider it so important to share this message. Stress can be dealt with. How? Have a tea ritual. Embrace rituals. Wake up at a certain hour. Do your thing, if it's coffee, if it's matcha, if it's just tea, if it's a chai latte, if it's an almond latte. Don't wake up abruptly and run out the door. Give yourself the time to wake up gradually so that you don't put your body into intense stress from the first second that you open your eyes. During the day, find me time, find rituals, have a proper lunch have a proper dinner. I wish that you have a proper breakfast. Work out. I am working towards that myself because it's not easy to find time and there's another vicious circle involved. When I work out, I sweat. If my scalp itches, it drives me crazy. So I have to work out and I'm not itchy and then I will have to wash my hair and I'm really trying hard to work through all this so that I am more serene and that my whole body is calmer. Be careful what you eat. Perhaps you're eating a bit more sugar than you should. I am trying to quit sugar. I am using honey from my father's bees and so far I've lost two kilos just by replacing sugar with honey and by renouncing dairy. Perhaps something you might want to look into. I hope that you enjoyed my tips. Perhaps I will film a second video with the mental part of dealing with psoriasis. Thumbs up if you want that. And why not thumbs up if you're suffering, thumbs up if you're not suffering. I really hope that this was educational. And if you want to talk about it, please reach out. You're not alone if you're suffering from this or eczema or any other skin condition that is stress related. Please subscribe to my video and share it. Please subscribe to my channel and share the video if you enjoyed it. It means so much to me. As always, I'm waiting for your comments and have a wonderful day.